guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. I hope you're all doing well, as usual. I always do. I always hope you're doing well. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Um, I've got a few things to talk about today. Some people have asked me about my fertility stuff that I was talking about. Um, I will talk about that another time, but I will talk about it if anyone's interested. I I'm not pregnant yet, but I should be ovulating in a couple of days, so fingers crossed. Um, I'm going to do a little, I've got a couple of finishes, some whips, and then I have a sampler September special. This pile here is all the things I might start. Um, <laughs> I haven't started anything yet for sampler September. I am working on a sampler. Um, I want to start at least one thing. I might start a thousand things. I don't know. Uh, my doggy is asleep in the chair over there. I don't know if you can see her behind my Lowry. She's so cute. Um, oops. Oh, now I'm crooked. So let's, sorry, I'm making you all dizzy. Okay, that's a bit better. Let's just get on with it. Um, I did have two finishes. Well, one finish and one partial finish. First finish was Yuletide Shanty by Plum Street Samplers. Um, it's a drum, obviously. Uh, I'll just show you what I did. So I stitched it on a mystery linen in my stash. I think it's 40 count. It is 40 count. Um, there's the side of the drum. Isn't that cute? Um, that whale took a million billion years to stitch. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating. It did take a million billion years. I'm older than I look. Um, and that is the top and bottom of the drum. This is the top. And this is the bottom. Old Saint Nick, he sails the seas. His beard grows long so he won't freeze. And I think that's adorable. I think this is why I decided to stitch this. <laughs> I really like it. Um, so it looks like this. Uh, if you're thinking, hmm, the tail of that whale looks paler than the rest of his body, you're right, it is paler than the rest of his body. I stitched the tail months and months and months ago, like last year, with one colour, and then when I came back to it, 3865 was in the kit, but it turns out I didn't use 3865 for the tail. Um, I think I was using a Victorian motto, uh, but it's fine. I think by the time it's rolled up in a drum, you know, because it's going to be rolled around like that, I don't think you'll really be able to tell. So... There you go. I'm happy with this. Now I just have to FFO it. The reason I wanted to finish this right now is because I'm going to a um, retreat in November with Paulette Stewart from Plum Street Samplers. Yay. And um, yeah, I want to FFO this by then. Um, my other whip that I'm doing is also Plum Street and I want that one finished too. So that's a finish. Hooray. I'm glad to have that done. And now I have to figure out how to FFO a drum. Um, there aren't any instructions in the kit, but it does um, send you to a website where there's about 10 lines of text instructions that kind of, kind of tell you what to do, but not really. Um, this chart I am going to give away, but I think I'll take it to the retreat and give it to someone there. So, sorry Floss you. Uh, right, the next thing I finished was something you guys haven't seen for ages. Um, actually, I'll just talk about it. This is Sarah Elliott. It's actually called The Sewing Chest of Nantucket Sister Sailor Sarah Elliott. Um, and as you can see, there's a box top here. I have the box. It's at my mum's house. Then you're also supposed to stitch all these little smalls. Um, they're like liners for the box. There's a needle roll. There's a biscornu, a scissor case, a scissor fob. I think there are ten pieces altogether. There's a lining for the underside of the lid. Yeah, there's a lot of stitching on this. Um, and what I finished was actually just the box top. And here it is. Isn't that cute? I'm very happy with it. I've been stitching this only at work. Um, and I finished it. The last time you saw it, I had done... I had done the ship. And probably... This house, this house, and some of these trees, I think. Maybe this house too. Don't know, but I hadn't done much. And the rest of it I finished just from stitching at work on, basically on night shifts and weekends. Um, it's pretty quiet, so I get some stitching done. And I think this came out really sweet. Um, I'm not so happy with the colours in the water. If you can see, the top is two shades of blue. And then as you come down into the river, it's still the light blue, but then there's a it changes to a green shade. And I just feel like they don't show up as well. But I'm not changing it at this point. Uh, also, I don't think those whales in the ocean really stand out well. I don't know if you can see, there's two whales there. This one's shooting um, water up into the air from its spout. 
Uh, this part here is satin stitch. It looks quite cool, I think. I'm very happy with it. Um, and the sheep down here are little French knots. So I think it's really pretty. It says, um, the man doomed to sail with the blast of the gale through billows Atlantic to steer, as he bends o'er the wave, which may soon be his grave, remembers his home with a tear. So yeah, this is, this, all of this is supposed to be a gift for my mum. Um, on her 50th birthday, I bought the kit and the box, and I think it came with this, um, it's not really scrimshaw, this scrimshaw ruler and a couple of accessories like, um, rings, uh, floss rings. Um, so that's supposed to be a gift for my mum. I bought it when she was 50. She's turning 60 in March next year. <laughs> so maybe I'll have it all finished by then. That's why I wanted to focus on this. Is I'm really glad the box top is done. That was the biggest hurdle and it took me a long time. Um, so good, that's a finish. I finished one of the other pieces on the inside so far. I'm halfway through with the Biscon U. I need to restitch the scissor case. It's gonna take a while. Um, but this is one of the pieces. I think this is one of the lining on the inside. It says, I would that this small garland fair weave around our life and be a prayer to keep from care a guard from every strife. So yeah, that was cute. This didn't take too long. Um, so that's that. Um, I'm really happy to have finished the top. I still have work to do on the other pieces, but they shouldn't take too long with the exception of this fully stitched scissor fold. Um, so hopefully by March next year that will be done. I'm still working on the pieces at work. Um, it's a nice work project because I never want to work on it at home and at work I'm usually bored and have nothing else to do. <laughs> um, this chart is out of print. Don't ask. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and now whips. I have been working on this one. If you saw my last couple of videos, I talked about this. Realist gave me this in exchange for me talking about it on my floss tube. Um, so this is Camille Monet after Claude Monet's painting. Um, it's Claude Monet's wife and she's stitching. That's why I really love it. And I love Monet and I love the colors and everything. I have been working on it, but not as much as I wanted to. My, that's what I've done so far. <laughs> not very much. Uh, it's about five, 800 stitches, probably. Um, my plan was to stitch one thread per day on this and I haven't, I haven't done that. Um, I'm way behind. I'm like two weeks behind. Um, obviously I'm working up in this top corner here, so that's what you can see there. Um, but this is actually quite nice to work with. I hate that everything is in three strands. It's a pain in the bum. But I'm doing a pin stitch start, so that's not too bad. And I also hate that all the threads are blended. Not all of them, but almost all of them. They're all blended. Um, so it takes ages to get the threads together, but the result is really beautiful. I'm trying to bring it closer so you can see. Um, it's really w good coverage for 14 count. It's amazing. And the result, the colors are so bright and stunning and it's going to be beautiful when it's done. So it might be a bit of a pain to stitch, but it is going to be beautiful. And I think that's the point of those Riolas kits. Um, the other whip I've been working on, excuse me, my mouth is dry need coffee. I've been trying to wean myself off of coffee because when you're pregnant you're not supposed to drink coffee. I'm not pregnant yet but also I've been getting weird headaches so I thought that might have been related to the coffee. I don't know. The other whip I've been working on <laughs> is another Plum Street and I also want this one finished before the retreat in November. This is Anne Barson Lofbro 1837. Yes. Um, and it's a Plum Street antique so it's a reproduction sampler um, that she reproduced. And it says, Hark from the tomb a doleful sound, my ear attend the cry, ye living men come view the ground where you must shortly lie. Princess, this clay must be your bed in spite of all your towers, the tall, the wise, the reverend head must lie as low as ours. I like that. It's like memento mori. Um, so I've done, I, I feel like it's a lot, but I think it isn't. Um, this is bigger than I thought. This is a 14 by 11 Q snap and this is only the top half. Um, so it's bigger than I realized. The words stitch up really quickly and it, it looks like I've done a lot of the chart, but really um, the motifs down this side and all the motifs on the bottom are what's going to take longer. But I should be able to finish this maybe even this month. It's a pretty quick stitch. Um, so there it is. It's very pretty. 
Um, you probably can't see very well, but there is actually a border on this and it's stitched all the way down this side and a little bit across the top. Um, it's stitched in a white color, so it doesn't show up that well. You can't even see it on the chart, so yeah. Um, this chart's funny because it gives you two options for color colors to stitch. Um, they're all, what are they, gentle art? Or classic color works? Right, they're all gentle art and classic color works, but there's actually a model palette and an antique palette, so it's like modern and antique colors. And so I didn't even use the Corkville colors. I used mainly Victorian mottos from my stash. Um, I just did a conversion myself. And I think my conversion is mainly based on the model palette. Um, so it will look mostly like this. So there it is again. I'm enjoying working on this quite a lot. The fabric is Extra Designs. I'm pretty sure it's 46 count. And I don't know what the color is. Sorry. I'll find out. Um, I did say it in a previous video, so I'll be able to find out and I'll put it in the information box below. So that's my last whip that I've been working on. That's good. Um, haul, I did get some haul. I got an order from 123stitch, but it was all just threads to kit up some of this stuff here. So now I'm going to start showing you this stuff. Mm. Need to make some room. This is a big pile of things that I want to start. <laughs> Um, because it's Sampler September, Teresa told us to start a sampler, and I'm thinking I might start like all of them, maybe? This isn't all the samplers I have, not by a long shot. Um, these are the ones that are calling me that I really want to start, or they're all in different stages of kitting. Some are fully kitted, some are not kitted at all, kitted at all. Um, but I will be making another shopping trip or shopping order in a couple of weeks. Um, so I will kit up whatever I decide to start. Um, so I'm just going to start at the top of this pile and work down and I might make piles now. Yes, I think I'll start that. No, I won't. And I want you guys to, if you see anything that you like that you want me to start, tell me because I'm indecisive. I still haven't started anything even though it's the 17th of September. Um, and I want to start all of them. My pile is falling over. Okay, let's start. Uh, everyone knows this one. This is Jenny Bean's Halloween sampler. There you go. It's super cute. It's by Shakespeare's Peddler. Um, I had a million Shakespeare's Peddlers I wanted to put in this pile um, because Teresa Vanette, who's the designer behind Shakespeare's Peddler, she's the one who started Sampler September. I thought for sure I need to do one of hers. This one's been on my list for a long time. I kitted it up ages ago, sort of in my own conversion with mostly Victorian mottos. Um, 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 I don't have a fabric yet, but I have a million things that will work. I think that is a definite maybe to start. If I don't start it now, I'll probably start it in October around Halloween. Oh, it says, when I am dead and in my grave and all my bones are rotten, of this you see, pray think of me or I will be forgotten. So I do like that. That is in the probably pile. Let's call that probably. It's on the top because it's small. The small things are on the top. This one's small. I love this. This is Rachel Holmes by Heart String Samplery. I love this because the colours are so beautiful. It's looking a little washed out to you. I think my light might be too bright. Nope, that didn't really help. Okay. What if I just move it back or something? Move it to the side or something? I don't know. Oh, that's a little better. Um, yeah, I, I love these sections with patterns down here. Lots of colours. This just looks like a lot of fun to stitch. This, not so much fun. This, lots of fun. Um, yeah. I super want to start this. This isn't kitted at all. Um, I would do my own conversion. It calls for wig style works. Um, I would do my own conversion. I have tons of fabric that will work, so I could start this. And that's definitely in the probably pile. The drawn thread. You know, I don't have a drawn thread on the go at the moment, and I feel like my life is incomplete. I love the drawn thread. They're my favourite designer. Um, this is Takata number one. Up on the wall over there is Takata number two. I'm going to move you again. I'm sorry. So this one here, mm, that one there, that's Takata number two. Um, it's beautiful. It's sort of a study in gold work. 
<coughs> Takaja number three is kind of white work. Number four, I'm not sure what number four is. It's sort of lots of bands of different stitches. Number five is darning. And number one is whatever. I don't know what this is. It's an alphabet. They were all alphabets, I think. Um, with some specialty stitches and so on. <coughs> and I really, really want to stitch this, but it's not kitted up. And I will definitely stitch this in the called for silks. Um, yeah, but I need to get them. So that one is in the I can't start now because it needs to be kitted pile. What a bummer. What a bummer. Um, I don't have enough room here for all my piles. The next one. Oh, I love this one. Oh, I can turn my camera back. Can you see my dog? Hey, Scotty. Hey, Scotty. Good girl. You can't see her because of the loud stand. Um, this is Eliza Bell Cox. I love this. The colours are amazingly beautiful. Um, I love the verse on this. That's what I really love about it. It's another sort of Memento Mori verse. verse. Memento Mori verse. If you don't know what Memento Mori is, it means remember you will die. <laughs> so um, I apparently... I read this a long time ago, I might be not saying this correctly, but I think people used to have things in their house, like the hair of dead loved ones and so on, as a reminder that they would die. Um, for me, that sort of tells me to live my life to the fullest. I think for people back then, people of faith that might tell them to live piously so you get into heaven. But I like Memento Mori type stuff, not because I'm like super goth, super hardcore or anything, I just do. Um, but I'll read this to you. Do you think the verses go one, two, three, four? Or one, two, three, four? I don't know. It works either way. There is a modest little flower to friendship ever dear. Oh, plant it on my humble bed and strew it over my beer. No sculptured marble ever shall show my long and lowly home. That little modest humble flower shall mark my silent tomb. Let not the dark sepulchral you its sombre branches wave, but let that little fragile flower alone grow on my grave. Then shall my grave by this be known, a, a little smiling spot, a mound thick covered with the flower that says forget me not. I think it's nice. It's beautiful. I've pulled this, uh, 46 count willow green from Zweigart. It's a bit greener than what you're seeing, a yellowish green. I think that will work really well with these colours. It might be too green, I'm not sure. Um, but actually, this fabric might not be big enough, I'll have to measure it, because it calls for 19 inches wide. This might not be wide enough, but I'll measure it and see. And if it's 18 inches, it'll probably still work. I can deal with two and a half inches on each side. Yeah, two inches even, probably. Um, but this calls for 40 something skeins of silk. Um, so I'll pull the, what I might do, because I do want to start this, this would be amazing to start. I might pull the DMCs, put them on here and see how I feel and then decide if I start. And decide if I'm going to do DMC or silk. Because 46 skeins of Everest Y is pretty expensive. Um, in Australia we pay about seven fifty per skein. Which is a lot. It's quite a lot. Um, so seven fifty, fifteen. 150 it's about $300 worth of silk I would need for this so mm, <laughs> don't know um, yeah this is in the maybe pile because I will put colors and have a look oh I have some digital charts and what I've done here is print out photos of the chart to show you um, but there are a couple that I haven't rendered out yet um, I'll just talk about them and I'll put in photos here so you can see First one is um, Sunspot by Long Dog Samplers. There are actually two. There's Sunspot and Beauty Spot. Um, and I love them both. Um, they are just cross stitch. Excuse me. Long Dog Samplers. Um, they're pretty big. Uh, they require, well, they call for gentle arts, but there's a DMC conversion. I think I'd just go DMC because there's enough going on there that you don't, the, the bright colours will be fine if they're solid. Um, they also call for sequins to, go, to be stitched on the background, which I think is super cool. Like if you can see the little yellow dots, they're all sequins. Um, and it calls for uh, 18 count silver lurex, Ada. I might just go for like opalescent, just because silver lurex is actually difficult to find. 
especially an 18 count. I would do it on 18 count Ada or just to make it easier on myself, I might do it on like a 40 count opalescent so I can do one strand. Although I could probably do one strand on 18 count Ada, couldn't I? Anyway, I'm not sure, that needs to be kitted up anyway, so it's not an immediate start. Um, Sadie Wood, Sadie Wood's Sampler. Sadie Wood's Sampler by Barbara Anna. I love this, I haven't even bought this yet. Um, I have bought the long girl ones. I haven't bought this one, I really like it, it's so cute. Um, it's probably not a top contender though, especially since I haven't paid for it yet. Um, and Hannah, oh no, what's she called? Hannah something. It's an Ackworth um, sampler. I really love it because it's crazy. She looks like she doesn't give a damn. Um, like it's all the alphabets upside down and on the side and it's crazy. Like some Ackworth samplers are very neat and tidy, very ordered, but this one's like a little crazy and I really like that. Um, and I have some red sulky threads that I might stitch that in or I might just get a hank from Silks For You of like a charcoal colour to stitch it in, or a green colour. Ooh, a really nice green. Um, yeah, so that that's fun. I love that. Um, those are the digital charts. Um, next is another Barbara Anna. This is Portuguese Bird Sampler. And everyone's seen this, I think. I love this a lot. I think this bird is super cool. I like the colours. I love this flower. The verse I'm not crash hot on. It's tell me ye knowing and discerning few where I may find a friend, both firm and true. So I could change that out, I don't know. This isn't kitted. I don't know what, I think this could look nice on like a pale teal fabric. But I haven't thought about it that much. Um, I don't know if this is an immediate want, like need to start now sort of thing though. Oh, maybe it is, it's so beautiful. I'm going to put this in the maybe pile. <laughs> I'm so indecisive, you guys. I just want to start everything. This is really, really beautiful, though. I like it more and more the longer I'm looking at it, so let me keep looking at it a bit more, and then it'll go on the yes pile. I'm going to put it on the yes pile and see if I have a fabric that works for it. That's what I'm doing with that one. Okay. Oops, I'm losing things. Okay, this is Elizabeth Sarah Oliver by Plum Street Antiques. This is one, if I finish Anne Bus in Loughborough before the Plum Street Retreat, I will start this one at the retreat. Um, or before the retreat. It's hard to see there. I don't know why they give you such a terrible photo. Um, there's no model photo. Actually, that, that on the front is the model. This is the original antique. That's the model. I have some of the threads here, but not all of them. Um, I really love the verse on this, but it's really difficult to read. Um... This needlework of mine can tell where uh, learnt it well. Something by my elders, but taught by my elders was touched not to spend my time in aught. I'm sorry, it's really difficult to read. I have forgotten. I've opened up the chart and read it, and it does make sense, <laughs> and it's really nice, and it's very pretty. I mean, I love the border. It's going to take a long time to stitch, and I love these motifs around it. Yeah. So this one's definitely going to get started, but not this month probably. This will be a November start, so that'll be future. I also need actually. I think I've got all the threads. I just need to actually pull them out of my out of my cupboard. This is a definite. I love this. Sorry, I've knocked the table. This is Marianne Farmer by The Scarlet House, 1834. I think this is stunning. This is beautiful. Um, It calls for NPI. I'm happy to stitch this in DMC. I've got a million pieces of fabric that will work. This is a definite. I just think it's beautiful. I really like flowers at the moment. I like verses and flowers and little motifs that are like flower baskets and stuff. <laughs> and birds. I like birds too. And willow trees. Um, yeah. That's a definite. I love this. I really love this. Someone on Instagram has stitched this recently and I was just watching it drooling. So yeah, I love that. Um, oh, this one is like probably a definite. Like no matter what, I'm probably starting this. English Garden by Sampler's Not Forgotten. I saw the model of this at market and I was just, my jaw dropped. I was like drooling on the floor. I spent a lot of time in the Sampler's Not Forgotten booth 
So the ladies are lovely. They're so nice. Um, they had York mint patties, which I'd never had before. <laughs> and I just kept going in there. And I, I promise it wasn't just for the York mint patties, but it was partly for the York mint patties. And then when I left, when I went back on the last day, um, they were like, oh, here you go, take the rest of the bag. And I was like, no, I can't. I'm traveling to Australia. I can't really carry them. <laughs> but oh, they were really yummy. It's hard at market. You get hungry. Um, and the York mint patties were lifesavers. Anyway, this was definitely my favorite thing at market. And... It's almost a definite start. I've pulled some fabric. This this is it calls for something grey, like tin cup or something from Wix Dye Works, a grey shaded Wix Dye Works. So I've pulled um, what is it? Dark Mountain by X2 Designs. It is forty count, forty six count, um, and these are the called for Gentle Arts. Sorry, Wix Dye Works flosses. Aren't they beautiful? This is going to be to die for. So that is like a definite. That's like the most, probably out of this whole pile, it's the most definite, I think. Um, <laughs> you guys are going to go crazy. And Tom Ufendel. Yes, this is a working copy. The original chart is safely at my mum's house. Um, I took this copy at work because I knew I was going to start it soon. I have both here, of course. Um, Isabella Ufendel. But I think Anne is the one I want to stitch. I love this. I love this. I'm not a fan of the verse. Oh my soul, what canst thou do with eternity in view? Flee to Jesus, flee away, not tomorrow, come today. Come this moment, for to thee, next may be eternity. So I'll change the verse, because I don't like that. Not into that. I said to my mum, okay mum, there's two of them. I'll stitch this one, you can stitch this one. And she was like, no, I want to stitch Anne. <laughs> um, I don't know, if I just start Anne, then she'll have to stitch Isabella. <laughs> um, but yeah, this isn't kitted up at all. Uh, I think there are... What's this, Anton? I think there are a lot of colours. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 26 colours. Yeah, and a lot of them are multiple skeins. So this is another expensive one, probably $200 worth of silk. Um, and I think also it, it requires a fat half of linen. Um, and I don't really have any fat halves hanging. I don't think I have any fat halves hanging around. So this actually needs to be kitted up. So it's probably not at this point, unfortunately. Very unfortunately. I wish I could. If I did it with DMC, I've got like a... I have a few full yards of 40 pound stuff. But they're colours I don't really want to use for this. I have Vintage Country Mocha. And I have Mallow. I'm not using those for this. This deserves something special. So this is a not for now, unfortunately. Very unfortunately. Every time I look at that, I just go crazy over the colours and the beautiful flowers. Ah! This is the other one that's probably a definite. Um, this is a peacock, a unicorn and a badger. This is my working copy. Uh, that's it. You've seen other people do this. I think a few people started this recently. I missed the stitch along. I love this. Um, I have it partially kitted. Basically, I've bought all the silks I need to start in this top corner. So I can do the sun, I can do the background, I can do all the outlines, and I can do the clouds across the top. Uh, I can't do the butterfly. But I have some of the silks. And here they are. Ooh. So obviously that's the sun, that's the background, that's the clouds. There are a lot more silks needed for this, but this is another expensive one. Um, this is a 40 count Verdol, which is even weave 40 count. Um, it's from Zweigart. Um, it was white. I just um, I just shoved it in taupe writ just because I didn't want it to be white. So if any fabric does show through, it'll be sort of taupey colour, which is like the colour here, the colour here. So it won't look stark white. And also if there's anything showing when I shoved it in some taupe writ. Taupe writ. So that's that. I think my video just stopped itself and started itself again because I got to the half hour limit. So if there's a glitch in the video there, I'm sorry, my, I just saw a glitch on my camera. So this is probably like a, yes, I just need to start it. Yes, I desperately, oh. desperately want to start this. Um, it's been too long. I love it. What's going on the yes pile? Uh, my lord, I adore this. Permit of Copenhagen. Um, sampler 1663. 
Uh, I've had this for ages and I've not started it for multiple reasons. I will probably need a massive piece of fabric. I have a massive piece of fabric here, but uh, it's really stiff. It's definitely not what I got. It's awful. I'm not stitching on this. Also, it's like bloody 25 count or something. It's massive. Uh, so I need to get some fabric for it, so it won't be now. But yeah, definitely DMC. There's a lot going on in this sampler. I really like it. See, I could stitch this on Mallow, couldn't I? This actually would be fine on Mallow, maybe. Maybe I could start it. Mm, I really like it. I keep pulling it out and saying, oh, I'm gonna start it, but, 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 it's just so big. Not that that's a problem, I finished Sarah Brazier, so I can finish big things. Sarah Brazier is at the framers at the moment. She should be finished in a couple of weeks. So. Um, this one might be indefinite as well. Ink Circles, Little Alien Schoolgirl. I love this. It's so funny. It's hilarious. There's lots of little in jokes in this. Um, obviously, it's meant to be a schoolgirl sampler, like all the samplers we stitch were stitched by schoolgirls, but this is like an alien in the future stitching her schoolgirl sampler and all the little motifs that surround her in her world and a verse in some language that she makes sense to her, obviously. And um, I love it. I have it kitted. I have all the cold for flosses. I have a an XG design fabric here. It's sort of a peachy, orangey colour. I'm going to put this in the guest pile. Uh, Bright Needle, the sampler sampler. And as you can see, it's a sampler of lots of miniature samplers. And Bright Needle things are often called to be stitched over one, which I would do, no problem. I have a piece of even weave in here. Don't know what count. 32 count, maybe. Um, I'm going to put this in yes because it'll be super easy to start. Just grab the DMC and go. Yes. Yes. Maria and Tony. Uh, 1835 question mark. Uh, this is a Spanish, uh, Mexican sampler. And I think it's beautiful. There's lots of sort of flame stitch, lots of colourful parts. It's fully kitted. I got the kit from, I got the kit from the assembler when I bought it. Um, I've gone through and organised all the silks onto a card and then I replaced the linen it came with. It came with this linen. I don't know if you can see here. It came with this linen which is like a natural looking colour but I really want it on like a white colour so the colours stand out. This is 40, 40 count antique white. Um, so I, I like, I want antique white for this. So I'm going to put this in the yes because it's all ready to go and I really want to start it. I have that many Mexican samplers. I probably, no joke, have 20 something Mexican samplers um, and I haven't started any of them yet so I'm quite keen. And there were many other Mexican samplers I wanted to pull out today um, but I just limited myself to one. One at a time will be fine. Okay and the last one in the pile is, might be a problem, the last one in the pile is this one. A flame stitch sampler a scarlet letter you've seen this a lot of people have stitched this it's beautiful amazingly gorgeous um, this is all flame stitch obviously these are eyelets I think they're eyelets this part uh, this is beautiful stitching I have all of the threads here I have the fabric here um, I don't like this fabric though, it's again sort of a natural kind of fabric. I might swap it out for something whiter. I don't know, haven't decided. Um, I'm sure I have something that will work so I'm going to put this in the guest pile because it's all kitted. So, there we go, flame stitch sampler. That's everything, that's my whole pile. Um, I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven things in the start pile. Um, added to my already existing 40 whips, that'll be 51 whips. <laughs> Sounds reasonable, why not? <laughs> um, let me know what you think. There's probably at least two or three that I will definitely start, and uh, probably in the next couple of days. So let me know what you think. Um, it's so exciting just to play in my stash and look at my samples and so on. Um, I love everything I showed you today. 
Uh, there are so many other things I love too. I mean, there were lots of things I could have pulled out, but they weren't samplers. So this is just samplers today. Let me know if there's something that you think that I should definitely start, or at least that I should definitely kit up to get ready to start. Let me know in the comments, please. Um, you can talk to me on Instagram too. My Instagram name is Tashage, T-A-S-H-A-G-E. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say for today. I can't believe I got through all of that in 35 minutes. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> I obviously need to do some shopping. Um, I'm also probably going to be getting a Chatelaine in the near future. Just letting you know. Okay. Uh, that's all. Have a good day. Bye.